a student asked me this question last week and I thought I knew the answer, but it turns out I didn't. So I wanted to share with you my research on this because it was actually kind of difficult to find anything about it via our friend Google. So as a quick review, plasma cells, the whole point of plasma cells is they're part of the specific or adaptive immunity and their job is to make immunoglobulins, which are also known as antibodies. And each plasma cell produces only one specific type of immunoglobulin for one specific thing. So for example, a specific strain of rhinovirus or one particular type of pollen, so forth. So they, they secrete these immunoglobulins, which then travel in the humors. This is why it's called humoral immunity. They travel in the humors of the body, mainly the blood and the lymph, but also secretions like breast milk and the mucosa of the digestive tract. And when these immunoglobulins come into contact with whatever antigen they're specific for, they can help neutralize that antigen. So where do the plasma cells come from? Well, they originate from B cells, which are made in the red marrow. You can see the red marrow here in this uh, femur. So the, the red marrow makes B cells. They are lymphocytes. Okay, it's a type of white blood cell. And these cells are then secreted into the circulation where they'll travel in the blood. They can also travel into the, uh, in the lymph. They like to hang out in the lymph nodes. And what, you, what you'll see then is that these B cells will eventually come into contact with a specific antigen. And whatever that antigen is, they will gobble it, gobble it up. We can see right here actually what happens. The B cell, the little flower up here, the yellow flower is meant to represent an antigen. The B cell will uh, digest it via endocytosis. It'll bring it in via endocytosis, break it up into little bits, and then display the little bits on the outside via MHC2 molecules. Then we'll have a helper T cell come along and bind to that, and that activates the B cell. It essentially says, okay B cell, this is your antigen, you're specific for this, all you're going to do from here on out is deal with this one particular antigen that you just located. This little yellow flower is yours. That's your life's work now. And at that point, the B cell is gonna is gonna differentiate. And there's two roots here. One part, a small number of these differentiated B cells are gonna become memory cells. So they're not gonna do anything about the problem right now, but they're gonna hang on to the memory of it for later so that the next time you're exposed to that, you'll react more quickly. Then the other, the larger portion of the differentiated B cells are going to become plasmablasts. And these are sort of teenager plasma cells. And they're going to start to produce immunoglobulins specific for that little yellow flower. Uh, so at this point, they're activated, they're traveling in the blood, and then a, a, a while later they'll fully mature into plasma cells, which can produce hundreds if not thousands of antibodies per second when they're activated, which is really amazing to think about. <clears throat> so a couple of interesting things about these plasma cells. One of them is that you may know, you may be familiar with the different classes of immunoglobulins. So there's IgA, IgM, IgG, IgE, and they're essentially doing the same thing, but they're slightly different shaped and they have uh, slightly different mechanisms. Um, and <clears throat> what determines whether these plasma blasts and plasma cells are going to make IgA or IgE? You know, how do they know which one to make? It really depends on the milieu when the B cell is activated. That's going to essentially determine what type of immunoglobulins the plasma blasts will make and also how long they'll live. So we used to think that these plasma cells would only last a couple days at the most because they were actively fighting whatever it was you were exposed to and then you didn't need them anymore and they'd go away. Um, but it turns out recently we're finding out that these, some of these plasma cells can actually last weeks, months, maybe even years, which is really interesting. So it turns out that the memory cells are not the only B cells that are allowing us to have continued immunity. For example, once you've been vaccinated, these, these long-lived plasma cells may also be contributing to uh, long-term immunity. The other thing I wanted to review while we're here is just where these things are taking place, because I think this is something that's hard to wrap your head around in the textbooks. So like I said, the B cells are produced in the red marrow and the bone. Um, a lot of times these, these, this activation process will happen in the lymph nodes. That's a really common place. And 
the short-lived plasma cells aren't really going to go very far. Once they're activated, they'll usually stay there in the lymph node, produce all these immunoglobulins, which then will go into the lymph and the blood. And then when their work is done, you know, they undergo apoptosis. The long-lived plasma cells, however, will actually travel in the blood back to the bone marrow, and they can come back into this bone marrow and live there, like I said, for months or even years. It's a really interesting stuff. So back to our original question, which was, why are they called plasma cells? Because, you know, they're not normally, they're not really making plasma. They can be found in plasma, but they're often found in lymph, and they're made in the bone marrow. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. My initial thought when a stud student asked me this was that, well, they're making these immunoglobulins, which travel in the plasma, and that are main part of the immunity of the blood, so perhaps that's why they're called plasma cells. But it turns out that's actually not true. <laughs> and we, I did a little research with the help of some friends at the Human Anatomy and Physiology Society, because that's the kind of crowd I run with. And it turns out that plasma cells were named by Mr. Heinrich Wilhelm Gottfried Waldeyer Herz. And there's actually even a Vaughn in there, just to make it a little bit longer, but he didn't use the Vaughn, so we won't say it. Um, he, he was a very prolific uh, in the field of anatomy in the mid-1800s. As you can see here, he named the chromosomes. He discovered um, neuron theory. He just came up with the theory that there were these neurons. He named neurons, all kinds of other things. He was also um, extremely against having women in the labs, which is, you know, boo, hiss. Uh, but anyway, he he just, he came up with the name plasma cell. At first, he's the first one to publish it in the medical literature. And the reason that he called them what he saw under the microscope plasma cells was actually because of the extreme amount of protoplasm in the cells. This is an example of a plasma cell right here. And you can see that it, ha it does have a lot of what we would now call cytoplasm. The reason for that is these plasma cells, remember they're making these immunoglobulins at up to thousands of them each second. So they, need, they get really big, the plasma cells get really big because they're, they've got all this endoplasmic reticulum, they have Golgi bodies, all the things that you need to synthesize proteins, and lots of them, they need lots. So they're very large cells with lots of cytoplasm to house all of those organelles. So he saw these under the microscope and he said, oh, that we'll call it a plasma cell because it has so much protoplasm in it. Now the problem was that there were, at this time, when people were really just starting to look at all of these cells and you know get they had the equipment to finally see what was going on there were a lot of different people around the world working on the same concepts including some of the researchers here una and marshalko marshalko and so forth and they were all discovering similar things and coming up with their own names for them and sometimes they were you know, multiple things would have different names or they would use the same name for things that weren't the same. So eventually they decided that what uh, Walmart was calling plasma cells was actually what some other people were calling mast cells. Um, and it was getting very, very confusing. People, different people were using the term plasma cells in different ways. So finally, uh, Walmart actually revoked the term plasma in 1895. He said, okay, we're not going to use plasma cells anymore because it's other people are, are have come up with other things that are plasma cells. Um, and you can see a really interesting history of this in this um, progressive medicine text, which you can find on Google Books for free. So anyway, although what he saw was not a plasma cell, as we now define it, he was the first one to come up with the term plasma cell. And eventually, that name became associated with what we now know as plasma cells or immunoglobulin-producing cells. So I hope that clears up your question, if you had the same question that we did. And let me know if you have any other questions.